Welcome to Attican Plays Medieval Dynasty. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to Series 1, Episode 11 of Medieval Dynasty. I'm calling this one More Useful Stuff. We're going to be catching up on what we've done in gameplay since episode 10, and I'm sharing with you what I think hopefully are a no number of uh, useful tips and techniques and strategies that you can use to play this game. Okay, let's talk about, well, first of all, I want you to notice that we are married. We have a lovely wife, Inga, and notice that we have a child. We have a child named, uh, where is he, Dobrowa. So, um, um, let, let's talk a little bit about how to, how to romance and how to, how to uh, uh, get married, I think, efficiently. So, and in fact, I'm going to put that on hold and come back to it because the romance is directly tied to the economy, believe it or not. Uh, you can imagine, for me, those of you who know me well know, know that it is. Uh, but I, I, I want to show you how to kind of take care of both at the same time. And it'll make more sense, I think, if we go through the economy first. So I'm going to move out to another spot and we're going to, I'm going to walk you through the economic cycle that we've got going now. And I can tell you just, um, let's look at our inventory. We have 18,000 coin. And I'm not even worried. I, I don't pay attention to the economy anymore. I mean, I just, uh, every once in a while, I'll just go make a whole bunch of money and, and move on. So let, let me show you how that's working and, and how that's getting done. Now we've moved out to, uh, let me show you the spot, to right out here between Branica and Bar Branica uh, to the spot where we have, um, we had originally that right there, an extraction shed. It was picking up rocks, rock salt and limestone. Then we added the resource, uh, the warehouse, and now we've progressed to the point where we have a mine. So we've added a mine here at the same location. Now, um, early going or mid early, however you want to think of it, um, didn't have a lot of workers. So I built the mine. Well, I didn't even have the mine. Didn't care what what you do to really get a, get the kind of an early earlyish uh, thing going is get a pickaxe. And I talked about that in in episode 10. Buy a pickaxe first and then you can make your own after that. Now let me let me give it a hot key. Okay, so we're going, in fact, let's go back here just to illustrate how you really do this. You want to empty yourself of everything else. Um, uh, I, w I always keep a little plantain on me just, as I said before, just in case. But what you do is run into the mine, and then I, I showed you this before. You see all these deposits, these big uh, bubbles of rock, and we do our thing and we mine it. Okay, and then we get there. We got some iron. We got some rock. We got some salt. We do this, do this, do this. Keep working our way back through there. Keep running it back out here, and the key in this whole design is having. A warehouse out here nearby so now we can take all that heavy stuff and imagine I've got a full 40 kilograms or more of weight and I can just dump it all in that uh, in my warehouse and it's available as we've said before here and everywhere else we have a warehouse so that's phase one of this kind of early game is to um, Go out and do your own mining and, and just grab, just spend a day or two days or a whole season, however you want to do it, out here mining. Whatever you can stand, really, it gets really boring after a while. Uh, but you just run in there. And, and also, by the way, as you're doing it, these, uh, these rock deposits respawn, I think, every season. And what will happen is if you keep working, you just have to keep running further and further back in there, and it becomes less and less efficient. So, early, you know, right after a respawn, when there's a look at, look at all this beautiful stuff real close, you can get to that quickly. So, um, 
So get out there each season or however much you need to to make money and get yourself iron. So now you've spent some time out here with the iron. Now uh, you, you'd want to uh, do something useful with that iron. You don't want to sell the iron because it, it can be value added and make more money for you. Uh, but uh, the other stuff, you can sell the salt, you can, you can even sell the rock. Look at how many rocks we have right now. You get so many rocks that it just gets out of control. Um, so now let's go back to, uh, back to the home base. Well, you know what? Uh, give me a minute. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this a little bit so we've got a bunch. And, and then, I, then we'll go right back and I'll, I'll show you the next phase. Now, we've run back uh, to our settlement and a couple things. See how our, our peeps are headed out to work. Good for them. Um, that is a tavern level two. So the tavern used to be right there where that house is. That is now a tavern level two kind of in the center of the town. And I'd really thought about having it right down here along these roads. The uh, ground didn't cooperate with me. This ground isn't as flat as it, it could be. But uh, no matter, I like this. And uh, I, we, can, we can fence this off and make it look good. So this is our new tavern level two. And right here is our new home. This is where uh, my wife and I live. Um, and uh, our little baby, we've had a baby. And we'll talk about that when we get back to the romance. But there, there's my lovely wife, Inga, and our little child, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever it's named. I say it because I right now, well, I guess it's a boy because we do have an heir. Uh, so you can see I've got, um, little bit of stone fencing around it. It uh, not quite right, but um, it takes a lot of patience and work to get all this right. But anyway, there's our stone house with some wood, wood uh, middle frame to make it look nice. Okay, beautiful home. So let's go back to the economy though, and, figure, and then I'll then I'll explain you know what I how I think you need to work about getting um, a wife. Okay, so imagine you've spent however long you decided to spend out there mining. And then you go home. So you could do it mine the last day of the season or the last two days of the season. However you want to do it, then you don't even have to run. You can just uh, end up back at your house for the start of the new season. So um, notice we've got a little more coin. I stopped off on the run and sold some stuff to uh, Norbert in Baranica. But... Now, you would have iron. See, we've got 21 in here right now. I'm going to grab that iron. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab the sticks, but I don't, I don't know what, what our six stick situation is over here. And uh, what you would do, and imagine, now that's 21. We could have 100 iron or 200 iron. You know, it depends on how long you want to stay out there. I just did just enough to make sure I had 10 so I could show you this. So we've got 21 iron, and we run over here to our anvil. And we need some sticks. So let me go grab some sticks. Normally I would have a big pile of sticks there. Now I've grabbed a few sticks just, just to be able to illustrate this. So we go into crafting, we go to iron weapons, and we go to our um, iron arrows. And we craft as many of them as we can. In this case, it's two stacks of 50. So we're gonna make 100 iron arrows. You make them in stacks of 50. So, um, We've got all that iron that weighed a lot. And we've got some sticks that, that have a considerable weight. But when we finish crafting them, what we're gonna have are 100 iron arrows. And if we look at our inventory, we've got 100 iron arrows that weigh very, very little. You can carry hundreds of these if you have them. So imagine if you'd spent a day or two out there just going as hard as you could go to iron, uh, to mine iron, then you and then you picked up a lot of sticks, which is no big deal. It's super easy, but you can, and you could just start crafting. Now, what I did in this kind of prior to this stage, I would actually dump my sticks and my iron here in a pile at, within reach of this anvil. So I'd scoot over here and dump them in here and make sure that I could hit the anvil and the sticks and the iron in from one place because it's going to get very heavy and I would have a big pile of sticks, a big pile of iron and then craft uh, dozens, you know, uh, multiple sets of 50 iron arrows. Now, you take those iron arrows and you run them back here with each, you know, as you're moving, shuttling iron and sticks back and forth and you shuttle your arrows back here. Whoops, going the wrong way. 
you shuttle your arrows and start loading them up in the warehouse and then you grab more iron if you had a whole bunch you couldn't carry it all at once more iron more sticks whatever keep running back and forth it does not take you very long to make a whole bunch of arrows now once you've got those arrows let's go look at what you would do with them okay so now we're back down here at our trade center notice our the house that we used to have there is gone that's because we've moved back up to the settlement now either model works you know where you transport yourself at the end of the season to here uh, to, for, to a house so that you can go and do immediate trade or you transport yourself back to the settlement and uh, allow yourself to do smithy work i actually think all things considered i like going back to the settlement better to do the smithy work um, plus you can go there and address any issues you want or whatever but they both work great trust me on that so now what you would do is again I'm gonna get rid of that pickaxe we want to be light as we can get don't want the iron don't want the sticks uh, you would load yourself up with stuff so you grab all the iron arrows and this could be a thousand not a hundred easily I load up all those and then you could go down here and say okay I've got a whole bunch of rocks I don't need them often I'd have salt uh, stacked up here you could grab that the other thing and I'm going to sneak off into another topic real quickly salt can be a pain in the behind because a lot of times look at that it gets stored in this I wish you could turn that off and oh I don't need that cabbage seed either there we go okay uh, lots of cabbage there meats actually very low we'll have to look have to look into that I can sell those berries too um, and that stuff and that stuff and those and those and those because for now the mushrooms don't seem to have any value in terms of uh, uh, recipes I think they should um, and then we would just load ourselves up with uh, stuff so we've got 26 we've got another 14 uh, kilograms of stuff we could carry so we could maybe grab I just grab rocks but limestone would be good if there's any uh, whatever so what I say 14 okay so now we've got a nice big load and we can run into town now um, because we have our trading center we've got our three traders here and we've got two more over there so that's five traders now why do we care that how many there are well I'll tell you why because once you get to this go get this going full blast if you're really working on it and you are um, uh, whoops I gotta find up there's a merchant uh, and you are uh, rocking and rolling you will max out the cells in each of these cities so for example and I always I always gap with these people a little bit uh, to build up my diplomacy but uh, she's got 724 uh, coin left now she's got 10. <laughs> so you can imagine if I had a hundred I just sold her 102 arrows imagine if I had a thousand I could wipe out uh, two or three entire villages worth of money take all their cash and that's exactly what I was doing earlier just literally going into to uh, you know going into this town seeing Adelina and Unagost and Sobermere and making 3,000 coin uh, with very uh, very very quickly suddenly I got 3,000 coin I could go back load up again or two or three times and run over to Borowo and make another 2,000 from Ida and uh, Falibor over there, and this is sad. I've played enough, I'm starting to know their names. Um, so there's 5,000 coin you could make in just, uh, just you know, a few hours, and that's just super easy. I mean, uh, if money's your problem in this game, you haven't thought it through, you don't have a plan yet. That's what you need. You need a plan. So now I said that the romance of getting a wife, I tie it to the economy. Well, why is that? Because I have a ritual where I go to that warehouse get my money makers come in here and sell them right as I start wiping these out well I target uh, people to flirt with let's see if she's still here oh she's got she's I think she finally just gave up or no wait, she's got oh, she's got to be here there she is Baldwina so Baldwina look at this 100% approval and 100% affection 
Uh, I, I have flirted with her constantly. Now, with Baldwina, I got her up to like 80-something and asked her to marry me. And uh, I had like a 64% chance or, or something, and I failed. And we kind of hit a snag. But that's okay because I didn't want to... Um, uh, I didn't want to uh, um, just keep. Um, I, did, I, did, I didn't want to have all my eggs in one basket. So Baldwina was a target. So every time I would come into uh, uh, each day, as I would come into here to do the selling thing, I would flirt with her and try to keep that going. Now let me. Uh, now and we don't need to go over and do it, but I would also do the same thing: grab goods to sell and run over here to see Falibor and Ida to sell over in Borowo. But over there, they have a daughter, Inga, and they had a, a, a young daughter, Melina, and she actually came of age uh, along the way. So I would, I would hit on both of the daughters over there and kept going and going and going and, and keep working on the relationship. You're building your, building your diplomacy skill, you're working toward getting a wife, and you're making just ridiculous amounts of money. And um, so finally I got Inga up to 100% and she accepted. So I married Inga, the older, uh, elder daughter of Falibor and Ida. Could have been, and now you can see that 100%, I could, I, I could have uh, married Baldwina too, but that 100% hit too late. She hit, she hit, and just, uh, it just the time, way the timing worked out, Inga ended up accepting. And it didn't matter to me, any of them. Now, the other thing is personality. If you're going to do the flirting, you want to, you, to me, the personalities in the game, in my simple little mind, are there are two types. There's a serious worker and there's a vain kind of a, a gossipy kind of person. So if you look at the way you talk, there are the serious conversations are like, uh, man, I had a hard day at work. I've gotten into hunting. Do you have any tips? Uh, you know, and then the other side of it's gossip. Did you see that noble? Did you... Uh, you know, you're so pretty, uh, stuff like that. Now, the pretty can work with anybody if you get them up high enough, but uh, the, the compliments only work, uh, work better with the ones who are more into the vanity stuff. So uh, figure out if you're, when you're flirting, especially, but you can do this with everybody to build relationships, but with the flirting, uh, make sure that you kind of figure out, is this person a hard worker or is she uh, more on the vain side? And, and I don't mean to make it, I mean, that's so cut and dry, and I, I don't want to make it that, you know, our, our world is cut into two types of people like that, but the game is. So um, Inga turned out to be a hard worker, and Melina, in her sister, was actually the more vanity uh, kind of stuff. So I did pretty well with both of them. I did especially well with Inga, because that's where I start, tend to start, is with the hard worker stuff. Uh, because the, that, that's where I just have the most success. And that's, that's uh, I've talked about this, but the one little thing I do is I tend to have a pattern of hard work, uh, you know, uh, hunting, and I try that with everybody, and that way um, I don't have to memorize these, all these characters all over the map. I just always go for the ones that have those characteristics, and that way uh, when I find one, I can I can hit and move ahead, and then if I come back to that person later and realize, oh wait, uh, they're below 50%, I must have had a miss with them, then I can go the other tact if I want to and go down the, uh, uh, heard any good gossip, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, and see if I do any better with them. Uh, but I don't really worry about that so much as just stay with the hard work. Uh, the other one, by the way, how are you and the weather, works with practically everybody, but especially the hard workers. Uh, they, they seem to, that, again, they seem to respond the best, but that could just be because I tend to keep asking for them. All right, so let's see. So now, if you get you get that stuff going, uh, you got yourself something going on. Now, I want to have that economy almost automated, and so here's what I've done. You'll notice, uh, let's see. I'm gonna set this filter to resources. We've got our mine that we just looked at right up here. We've got a extraction shed and a mine up here in that, that nice valley between Branica and Branica. But we also have a mine down here east of Hornica. 
And we have another mine right here, which is like bear heaven in this mine right, this area right here, this cave, uh, kind of northwest of Hornica. And there is a fourth location down here. It's down here below Lesnica, down in, uh, right in here, I think. Uh, and uh, maybe eventually I'll build a mine there. But, um, so what you have to do with that, of course, like this one, you have to go out and kill the bear. Absolutely, there'll be a bear uh, who guards this. Uh, this is his hangout. And they, they like the caves and the reservoir, the, uh, so they kind of wander through here. But uh, you kill the bear, build your mine. And you have to run off and grab the logs elsewhere and bring them back. It's a bit of work, but it can be done. And now you got a mine here, and same thing here. Watch out for bears. I didn't encounter any but in, uh, when I did it, but w watch out for bears and the usual stuff. And get out here, build a mine there. Now, if they're not used yet, they're going to be. And uh, that's uh, that'll come, probably come out in the, in the next episode, show you how that's how, how my plan for that. So there you go. There, that's a really strong economy. I mean, it's ridiculously strong. You, know, you, you can make a thousand coin uh, per trader, per, per village, every season if you want to, practically. And, and you don't need that much. I mean, you, you really don't need that much money. So money is no longer an issue. Um, and, and you do want to be aware, I think I said this, but the traders' cash gets reset to 1,000 every season. So you can wear them out, take all their money one season. Once the next season hits, you can go do it again and take another 1,000 from them. So that's the, that's the economy. Now, the other side about the economy that I'm still working on is balancing production and crafting. Um, there's a few keys. You must have adequate storage. I've tended to run into storage issues with both food and uh, resources. And particularly, the I call it the salt problem, where the salt, as I mentioned, the salt gets starts getting stored into your food and taking up food storage space. Pain, it's a pain. Wish we could turn that off. Um, and uh, let's see, what else about that? That's a, that's enough. If uh, you if you follow something something along these lines, get into uh, get, build up your extraction points, get those mines. And you don't even need the mines. Get your extraction points. Get a pickaxe. Get out there and mine stuff. Get, come up with a um, an efficient way to move the heavy goods, like multiple resource uh, storage locations. Uh, then your economy, you know, when, once you have the smithy, your economy is not a problem. If if it is, you need to revisit things. Okay. So uh, we talked about the economy. We talked about romance. We talked about diplomacy and how to build that up. Uh, let's talk about survival. First of all, let's, there are, to me, there are three things, three categories of survival in this game. The first one is surviving animals and hunting. When you're going hunting or just moving around and there's, a, there's these aggressive animals out there like uh, wolves and wisent and bears and boar and even foxes. Uh, foxes are more of a nuisance, but they will attack you and they could conceivably kill you if you didn't, didn't defend yourself. So the first thing about surviving, absolutely most important, is the Boy Scout thing. I've talked about this. Be prepared. Have your weapon of choice. You'll notice I'm still using spears. I have done uh, some very successful hunting with a longbow. I haven't even messed with the crossbow yet. I'm looking forward to trying that. Uh, I think that's probably going to be my weapon of choice going down the road. But I really prefer the spears uh, because uh, the operation of the spear is so much easier. And what I mean by that, if I have a spear, I right click to aim and then I hit the left click to throw it, right? So I'll just throw it into the ground. So there, I just threw a spear. Now the bow, I right click to aim, then I left click to hold the bow down, you know, the drawstring so that it gathers power, and then I release it. The problem for me is I end up saying, oh, I don't have a shot, changing my mind, and then I let go of the left instead of the right, uh, mouse button and boom there goes arrow off into space and it just irritates the crap out of me plus it's a little lower to, uh, slower to get that 
load the bow and shoot. So if you get a bear charging at you and, and you know, you made a bad first shot and he's charging you instead of lumbering at you because he's wounded, it could be very dicey. So I really prefer spears, frankly. I do. Um, but anyway, but it doesn't matter. Whatever your weapon of choice is, make sure you've got it. Make sure it's on a quick slot, on a hotkey, so that you can call it up right away. Second one is have some sort of blunt instrument to use in case you miss and in case they, the uh, animal gets on you and make sure it's on a hotkey. Uh, easy way to die is fail to have that. So when you hit, hit whatever your hotkey is for your blunt instrument, if that doesn't pop up and you're sitting there trying to fight, kill these animals by hand, it's a, it, it doesn't work well. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a poor, poor way to go. Um, so let's go back to our inventory. So make sure you've got your, your hunting weapon. Make sure you've got a blunt instrument, a cudgel by the way, uh, is a good choice. You can make your own or you can buy one from Falibor. Uh, a cudgel is designed for killing pigs, so it's a real good thing for that kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat if it comes to that with an animal. So uh, make sure that you have that. And make sure you have an axe. If that's your instrument for fighting, fine. But more importantly, make sure you have an axe so that you can cut down trees and get more weapons if you need them. That's the other reason I like the spear is all these trees, these potential spears are all around me all the time. So be prepared, that's number one. Number two, and make sure you got your hotkeys loaded correctly, and make sure that you have some broad bane uh, plantain with you to heal yourself if, if you run into problems and you get attacked and, and get into a melee fight with um, uh, animals. And la later on, as I get better at it, I'll show you some melee tactics. Uh, uh, the one I'm using right now, really, is I, I hit control to crouch down. So I, I grab my axe, I, I crouch down, and that gives me hits. You know, right? And it doesn't take but one or two uh, to, to clobber a wolf or a boar or, or whatever's on you. Bear, different story. They're, they're tougher. You just don't... <laughs> You want to run and shoot with those or back up and shoot, which is another technique you can use. Uh, I'll just show you real fast. If, you, if you're if you fighting a, fighting an animal and they get on top of you close, you just kind of look down at them, back up, and as you back up, you know, you just aim, aim at their head and fire. So that's probably the best tactic. That's probably better than melee because you're, you can avoid more of the damage. But that uh, I need more practice on that. So uh, anyway, that's survival there. The other one is you want to get your um, you want to get your um, uh, hunting up to a level where you have this, where you have if we go to skills and we go to not survival there hunting. You go to hunting. Notice I'm only two of three, and I typically go. Uh, three of three, four. in fact, that's a mistake. I got two of three, and then I was going out on a night hunt, a quest where I had to kill three boar and four wolf at night. And the, I got another skill point. I went straight for this tracker. Tracker is lovely. You track animals on expect, specter mode, and I'll show you that. And that's actually a mistake, having that as one. Really would prefer having three of three here, so I'm gaining knowledge uh, more. That was a mistake. I, I thought because I'd already... Well, you get the idea because I thought because I'd already moved down into the tier two and tier threes that I was done. That's not true. So let me move up here to a place where I can show you just how great that tracker skill is. All right, look right here. If I hit left, see that wolf? If I hit left off, I can clearly see the animals that are close to me. I can scan to see that wolf. I'm going to sneak up on this wolf right here and try to get a decent, uh, there you can see it, there's another one back past him. There, I got that wolf, but now we can come up here and look at that. That's, what is that? There's another wolf right there. Now we could bend over and start skinning that wolf, but if we do, I almost bet you that guy will find us and come get him. So we're going to go get him too. There, he just saw us, and we got off a good shot and killed him. They always give you that howl before they attack, so they, it's like they announce they're coming. So now I should be able to skin this wolf safely because there's no other live wolves around me. And by the way, I don't, I don't even know if I have, do I have a hunting knife? Didn't even bring one with me. Uh, ah, 
boy, telling you how to be prepared, and I don't even have a hunting knife. How, how's that for prepared? But anyway, let's just pretend I did. I'll skin him. Then I'll run up here, and I'll find my other one. Where, where is he? Where's the one I killed? Oh, there he is. And that, again, see that spidey sense? I'm holding down the left tab. It does take uh, stamina away, so you got to be careful. Save your stamina for it. But now I can see I've got my, my wooden spear, which is very hard to pick up because it's very hard to see. And then I would skin that wolf, and then I would keep, then I would check around to see because they tend to tend to run in packs of threes and fours. So um, that spidey sense is just really helpful. And here's where it's really really useful. Let's say we're running up here. I, I believe the, the most vulnerable you are is you're going to come up over that rise and what if there's something right over it? Well now I can sense what's over there. I can see that there was no animal over there and I can come over and confirm that but but what I could see I could see these plantains and stuff but there were no animals so I didn't have to worry about it. So anyway that that's the spidey sense is great for it. That's how to use it is to locate one. When you're looking at pack animals like uh, boar, boar are actually pack animals. Actually, wisen are too. Wisen tend to, to kind of move along in groups of two. The wolves in groups of three or four, the boar in at least two, and sometimes three. And I've, I've actually had three boar attack me melee style at the same time. And I survived, but barely. I do mean barely. Okay, so that's kind of kind of some things about hunting and, and tracking uh, that are useful in the plantain and and, and there I, duh, I wasn't prepared because I, I put my knife away to, to make more room for carrying stuff in while I was in economy mode. So just make yourself a, either a mental checklist or a written checklist of I need a knife, I need a, an axe, I need some kind of melee wes weapon on a hotkey, I need my main weapon on a hotkey. If you do the bow, by the way, make sure you put the bow on a hotkey and make sure you buy, get your arrows and hit F and, and activate them so that they're using them. Otherwise, you've got a, a bow with no arrows. Uh, so that's that's the hunting hunting um, survival. Now, the second one is poison. Uh, the first thing about poisoning is don't get poisoned. Okay, I mean that's that's just the obvious thing. But um, you can uh, you can poison yourself by eating rot, or uh, rotten food, or uh, by a mushroom uh, by mistake that you don't want. And you can actually it's very easy to get sloppy and do it um, by accident. Uh, you can you can you can poison yourself by um, uh, you know thinking you're throwing something down and you hit the F key rather than the X and there you're messed up. Keep in mind this stuff right here. The St. John's wart is is what you can take um, to fix to prevent that poisoning. Was probably if you want to be conservative, you could think of your pre preparation as having maybe 10 St. John's wart and some broadly plantain on you every time you go out into a survival situation like a hunting or a long journey where you're going to go through some dangerous uh, territory or whatever because you, can, you, you really can accidentally poison yourself and where you have to really watch it is um, in the winter time when there's nothing out there for you to pick and, and you uh, accidentally poison yourself well uh, it could be game over or at least your character's over, you can decide whether you want to keep going or, or say, well, I'm one and done. But anyway, that's that's poisoning and hunting. And the third one is winter clothes. Be very, very careful when it's fall and you know you're going to morph back to your house. You're going to you're going, you know, automatically transport back to your house when the season changes. Make sure that uh, you know where your winter clothes are. Uh, you could just carry them all the time, but you really, I, I wouldn't advise that because it's just weight you don't need to, to carry. But um, make sure that you have winter clothes at your home or in your storage close by where you can immediately go get it and put it on. Okay? And then the, oh, and there is a fourth element to survival, food and water. And notice my water level, I've let it get very low. Make sure you're aware of water. You can carry a water skin with you and take water with you. Um, 
I try to be aware of that. I have been doing a good job here because I'm thinking more about what I want to talk about. Uh, but uh, I try to get water whenever I pass water. <laughs> if I if I come across a stream or so, a lake or something, I, I try to have a nice drink. Okay, so that is uh, survival as I know it right now. Use that tracking, use your hotkeys, be prepared, take a knife and an axe and, and your weapon of choice with you, have some broadleaf plantain and some St. John's wort with you to heal yourself, avoid poison if you accidentally do it, uh, make sure you get some St. John's wort, be very aware of that in the wintertime, and make, be very aware of the change of seasons from fall to winter, and make sure you know where your winter clothes are, and make sure you put them on, otherwise you will freeze to death. All right. I think that's enough. Uh, uh, well, all right. One last thing. Let's do a quick word about quests. And while I run home, by the way, I will tell you, I, overall, I love the game. The running, if you think it looks, it is just as, I've decided, it's as, absolutely as boring for me as it is for you to watch it. It is Honestly, it's a bit ridiculous, and uh, what prompted me to say that or think about that uh, is that uh, the quests, a lot of the quests are run to one side of the map, do something, go to the other side of the map, buy something, go back to the other side of the map, then go see somebody in the middle. It's just, uh, the running is extremely boring. It's just, I, it, it, I, I have nothing else to say. It's just boring. Um, oh, and the quests. Do your, start your quest early in the season so you don't time out. Because you typically, on your on your little challenges, your little thing, your little, little personal quest you're doing for people, like, uh, where is the guy? Who has a quest? Somebody has a quest here, don't they? No. Well, we can go up here. We can put our filter on quest. And then we can see if there's anybody. Yeah, there's one over here in Lesnica. There's one down at two in Hornica. So if you need quests to bump up your uh, dynasty rating, you uh, try to do them at the start of the season. Uh, th that way you have full time. And I would be very aware of any quests that ask you to bring them berries. And sometimes you just don't know. Uh, um, but if, you, if they ask you for berries in the spring, it won't work to pick them because you can't send them. They really want ripe berries, and you can't get them till the summer. So be, be aware of that. You be ready to run a lot. You can decide if you want to hunt your way. I've actually moved to a new thing now because the economy is so solid that I don't have to hunt my way to every city and make money every time I go into a town or village uh, because I've just the money's just not an issue. So the time is more important than the money now. And I just, I just go and do whatever I need to get done. So hopefully this has all been helpful as we finish in this disgusting rainy night. Uh, all these people don't have enough sense to go in, go in out of the rain. Uh, I, we'll go in here where it's dry. And we'll finish off the discussion by saying, I hope you found this helpful. And I will keep playing. And I'll come back with another update when I feel like I've got uh, kind of the what I think of as the automated economy going and uh, everything is really strong and solid and I've made some more progress on uh, developing the settlement. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player. I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe and join us for our next Medieval Dynasty video. Thank you.